The 2020 World Press Freedom Index, compiled by an international non-governmental organization, Reporters Sean Frontiers, Reporters Without Borders, has ranked Nigeria 115th out of 180 countries. The index, which describes Nigeria as a climate of permanent violence, cited the killing of journalists and campaigns of misinformation as example of the country's attempt to weaken the press. It said Nigeria is now one of the West Africa's most dangerous and difficult countries for journalists who are often spied upon, attacked, arbitrarily arrested or even killed. Joining us live by Skype to discuss further on this is Lekon. Otufo Duri, former editor at Nation and Punch Newspapers and the CEO of Media Career Development. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. It's nice to be here. Pleasure to have you. Okay. Is this ranking good enough to begin with? Well, obviously it's not. Uh, it's a far down the line of uh, countries that are respecting press freedom. I look through the list and I can see that uh, we are far behind countries like Nam Namibia, which is 23, Ghana is 30, South Africa is 31. This is definitely not a good ranking for a country that's supposed to be a giant of Africa and a leader of uh, democracy. So it's not a very good rating at all. Nigeria prides itself as a democratic state within which freedom of speech is enshrined. Um, how come press freedom has remained a challenge, even in a government that is not supposedly repressive? Well, I think it's also because of the level of understanding of various government officials and uh, some security agencies about what democracy is. They really need to appreciate that democracy is a government where uh, people have the right to be able to express their, 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 their thoughts, and this is guaranteed by the Constitution. So the problem is really about the stakeholders, the people who are supposed to be enforcing these rights. And sometimes some of them get very, very sensitive to uh, exposure. The role of the media is to hold the government accountable and every other person involved. And to the extent that we do this, people who are, uh, since we are not under a military regime, the rights of the media needs to be respected. So the problem has to do with people who are in charge appreciating the essence of democracy. So that is where you have a governor, for example, that is happening in a Bowling state, where we declare that two uh, reporters should uh, be banned for life. It took a lot of outcry for him to reverse that. I mean, to the extent that a, a civilian governor can do that shows the kind of uh, atmosphere in which we are operating. Uh, the report also described Nigeria as a climate of permanent violence. As a veteran journalist, do you agree to this in its entirety? Well, when it says permanent violence, I will not totally agree. We have situations that limit press freedom, that prevent journalists from doing the job they're supposed to do in terms of uh, 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 legislations, in terms of laws that are there, in terms of policemen, security men harassing journalists, office has been invaded once in a while. But the violence part perhaps may be referring to maybe the terrorist activities in the northern parts of Nigeria, where maybe we have had even an instance. In fact, one of the reasons why we are rated where we are is because we have an incident of where a journalist was killed while covering uh, some protests. So that is because the rating is based on how many number of people, journalists died, how many were in prison, how many media assistants were killed or whatever. So I think that is uh, what they are referring to. The atmosphere is not conducive enough, but in terms of permanent violence, uh, that's a bit debatable. All right, let's look at other um, aspects to this. Every year in Nigeria, institutions of higher learning churn out graduates of journalism. How safe is it to practice in Nigeria with such report emanating? Well, I think... Uh, Every job has its own hazards. So uh, this, uh, what we are talking about is part of the hazards of the profession. And there's no way, maybe apart from a few other, some countries that doesn't have its own form of uh, 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 interference or the other. I think that should not be enough to deter people. As we move on to democracy, I mean, we have a situation where we can even call on ourselves. So for example, like it happened in Boeing State, the governor did what he wanted to do, and people uh, cried out. 
There have been instances where people went to court. And so there, 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 there's inbuilt mechanism to be able to checkmate people who want to violate our rights. So it should not discourage anybody from coming to journalism. The other parts of the world where maybe we have even more dangerous situations where journalists are short, journalists are increasing endlessly. So the atmosphere that we have, like we said, it's uh, a bit worrisome, but it's not enough to dissuade anybody from becoming a journalist. You certainly have large, to. I think it's this. All right, thank you very much. You certainly have to develop a tough skin if you are in the profession, yes. right? Yes, you have to, All right, like thank you, you do so in any much. other profession. <laughs> All right. Thank you.